Hello. Oh, it's so nice to see some friends. Just let me know if you can hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. Let's see. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone in our Europass family. My name is Susan Galliano, and I am one of the head teachers at uh, Europass Teacher Academy. And I, uh, I work in the Florence branch. And uh, I have met uh, many of you over the course of the years that I've been working here at Europass. And uh, I have to tell you that we miss you all very much. Mm, we really love coming into the classroom every Monday and um, not knowing really what to expect and what kind of uh, teachers are going to be waiting for us, what their needs are, and all of the wonderful alchemy that uh, is created in the classroom. And so because we can't, all meet together physically, we wanted to create some moments for us to um, be together, at least virtually, and support one another. Because this is an incredible moment. Last week, uh, you, if you followed the, uh, the teacher chat that my um, colleague Marta Mandolini gave, um, where she was talking about the fact that um, you know, that we miss each other and that uh, there's lots of things that we need to do to make sure that, you know, we, we take care of ourselves. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about motivation. Um, now, in this moment, when we're all under a certain amount of pressure to, to change our mode of teaching, um, you probably have spent the last month uh, in a crash course on learning new tools um, on figuring out uh, what's the difference between a live conferencing, you know, synchronous learning or uh, recorded, um, uh, recorded um, lessons that are asynchronous. And you've probably struggled with a lot of internet overload. I've heard from many teachers around Europe who have talked about the fact that in their countries, there were some definite problems with the internet connections. And so some of the students didn't have access to your lessons. Um, some of the students have families who are not able to collaborate because they're working, because perhaps they have been taking care of ill family members. Uh, they have been, they're under some economic pressure. And so these kids are, uh, you know, in a situation where, you know, they, it's not the ideal. And you teachers, once again, have been working miracles. How's that feel? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've developed a lot of new skills. Um, the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that you, not only are you continuing your teaching, but you are uh, providing them with that sense of security and stability and predictability that gives them an anchor to their day. Just like you did in the physical classroom environment, now you've transferred it to a virtual learning environment, but that regularity is so important to them, especially because they see their parents worried, they hear the news, uh, they read mm, the titles that pop up on their phones, um, they've lost their freedom of movement, uh, they've lost the access to their friends, and at the same time, you know, uh, they, they're, they're, uh, they're seeing you in a new light. Um, they're, they're seeing you from their home. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a totally different situation. So this first month was full of novelty, but it was also full of emotions. These emotions that tended to cloud up some of their ability to think straight. And let's be honest, it happens to all of us. I know I spent the first few weeks going, now what do I do? What do I do now? Do I, I, I don't even know how to begin. I had ideas, but it was difficult to make them, uh, turn them into something real because of the fact that I was feeling a little out of it. And so you can just imagine that for young kids who are looking to adults for that routine for that uh that regularity uh it was very difficult for them so now as we're approaching month number two um i'm sure 
that um, you have been able to, you know, find these new ways to reach your students, keep that connection alive. Mm, and uh, we also have to think of how we're going to keep them active body and mind. Okay, so uh, anyone who knows me knows how, how much importance I place on the container right anyone who's had a course with me came away saying probably that word you know that was uh, you could hear it in your sleep because when i talk about the container the container is all about um what is uh, going to happen in my lesson now in this case uh we are we have a new container because we have the computer screen um in some countries they're doing some incredible things with television where they uh, the teachers are uh, creating content that's being um that then they're showing on television for those students who uh, do not have uh, good internet connections or don't have all these opportunities uh they don't have a lot of um of equipment at home anyway this container is all about some routines some rules uh, it's about time, it's about clear instructions, and it's about mm, feeling uh, like, okay, I have some predictability in a life that has become very unpredictable. Great. So how do we, within that container, then create opportunities for free choice, for self-expression, uh, for a socialization, creativity, um, communication, and uh, just plain fun, okay? So let's make them look forward to coming to this computer screen because we know that when they are looking forward to coming to that computer screen, we feel it, even though there is this screen between us, but we feel it. We can see their eyes light up. We can see it in the things that they produce, in the things that they create, in the things that they can't wait to show us. So we know all about motivation, right? Um, we've, we've learned about it, we've studied it. Motivation that comes from the outside, you know, which we call extrinsic motivation, you know, mm, coming from things like prizes, games, you know, little competitions, um, points, feedback, okay, also grades, okay, um, even though we'll get to that later. Mm. And then we have intrinsic motivation, which of course is the things that uh, involve following our own, let's say following our own curiosity. Uh, intrinsic motivation being all about uh, some, some freedom to make choices mm? within that container that the teacher has made. Do I have some choice of movement? Maybe right now I don't have a lot of choice of physical movement, but I have choice of movement in my heart and in my mind. Um, things like, uh, can they master a new skill, which I'm sure that they are doing now mm, with uh, their technical skills. Could they also um, see, somehow chart their progress? Uh, could they mm, also continue to have that sense of belonging to a school community, which is so important to making kids want to get out of bed every morning and come to school? So now we want to make them excited to get out of bed, maybe splash some cold water on their faces, have a little breakfast, maybe even take off their pajamas and put something on and come. Or uh, if it's not about coming to the computer screen, it's about thinking on their own about hmm, different ideas that they can develop. So let's think about that, all right? If we think about mm, what makes for intrinsic motivation, what is it that gets us excited? Mm? A lot of it has to do with satisfying and uh, provoking, let's say, uh, stimulating our needs. So when we think about it, what is it that keeps our attention high? What is it that keeps us motivated? One thing that I often talk about in my courses is how mm, interesting lessons have some key ingredients, just like when you make a nice meal 
and hmm, maybe you're making um, something that you've made many times before, but this time you say, I wanna add a little touch of this spice to give it a different flavor. And this is something that we can do all the time without having to reinvent the wheel. What do I mean when I say that? I mean that interesting lessons are somehow emotional. Interesting lessons are somehow surprising. They are fun. There's an element of something personal. There's a connection to real life. And these things are uh, automatically going to stimulate more attention. And it stimulates our attention because we look at the things, the content, the things that we would like to cover. And we say, hmm, what spice can I add? Or how can I make this into a surprise? How do I, I know I want to teach this, but I'm not going to tell them that right away. I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm going to start all the way over here with some every problem that we're all having and somehow lead it to the content. Some socialization also adds some spice too. So more than ever, we need to think of ourselves less as teachers, as Norman Eng said, and more as designers of meaningful experiences. And we have this opportunity because of the fact that we are out of our comfort zone. This opens up new opportunities for us. It's exciting. So this is not a time to worry too much about transferring knowledge, right? Oh, they must memorize, they must learn, I have to interrogate them. Right now, because our cognitive abilities are already a bit stressed by this emotional situation mm, that's a bit uncomfortable. We have to think more of what is going to stimulate them to want to acquire knowledge. I have some thoughts. Number one, for you to make sure in order to keep your motivation high, take care of yourselves first and foremost. So make sure that you are eating as well as you can. Make sure that you are getting enough sleep. Make sure that you, uh, your, your workspace is a place of harmony as much as possible. Even if it's a tiny corner of a room, put, some, put something that smells nice there. Make sure you have all of the things that make you feel comfortable. Um, if you uh, need your glass of water, if you need your uh, something um, um, that if you can find fresh cut flowers, okay, recreate the environment that makes you feel good. Make sure that you get some exercise. I know that it's not that fun to exercise at home. And so I was thinking, you know, maybe some of you, if you have the good luck of having a computer and a smartphone, you could always find the videos that you like on YouTube or on some type of a, a website where you would uh, to, um, see some really cool videos. And then you call up a friend and you have a friend in video chat with you and you guys do it together. If anything, uh, if, if you have some way of um, feeling like, well, I, I have to go because my friend is counting on me, that might give you some more motivation. So that's a little combination of in, ex, in, extrinsic and intrinsic. Then, when you start off a live lesson with your students, why not start off with some movement? Why not first do even a little bit of, uh, I don't know, some uh, kind of fun go noodle, uh, or you, know, you do a quick yoga pose, or you could even do a little dance. Or you could do something different and start off with something more like um, a, a mindfulness minute, okay? There are millions of ideas, but you would start it off almost as a way to create the beginning of this new context, okay? Then maybe we need to think a little bit about their emotional and social intelligence. 
For example, there are wonderful apps there. There's one that I have on my phone that's called the Mood Meter. Okay, now I, I didn't necessarily want to do a you know any uh, publicity for anybody, but I mean this Mood Meter is really cool because you have the opportunity to um, show what your mood is, and it could go from high energy pleasant to high energy unpleasant to low energy pleasant and low energy unpleasant. And your students could tap in and every day they could kind of see in different moments of the day, keep track of how they're feeling. They could share these things. You could even create mood buddies uh, in your classroom where perhaps mm, you would have uh, students looking out for one another, uh, where, you know, one that mm, seemed to be a little bit uh, droopy, didn't seem to want to come to the very much or wasn't uh, was having some trouble doing the work maybe you could match them up with a mood buddy in their classroom where they would just have a special um you know chat just between them they could share funny memes they could share funny videos another thing to think about and i don't know how much um, we are used to thinking about this but uh, this, it's very tiring for uh, teachers to sit and speak for a long time and uh, uh, to stop into a screen, especially when we're not always getting all that nonverbal feedback from our learners, right? Many of them keep the video camera off. Uh, you're not really sure what's happening. Or even if the video camera is on, they're kind of like this. So I want you to modulate, think about your voice because the way our voices are captured on these microphones, these microphones are usually not a professional quality, they're quite cheap. And they tend to just capture those frequencies of our voice that are um, uh, maybe in the high, medium to high frequency. And there can be a lot of echo. And think about this, think about if there are ways to make your voice sound better, perhaps modulating, it's different if you're talking from up here than if you're allowing your voice to settle more into your throat. When you allow yourself pauses, more pauses, a bit more silence and stressing the words in a certain way, it makes it very interesting for them to listen to it. Uh, I see it in my own house with my own children. Uh, they're in uni at university but one of them has all of her lessons that are synchronous. And she, uh, her is, she's exhausted by them because just listening to the sound of the teacher's voice is exhausting. So let's think about that. Then keep a lifeline with your colleagues. You could have a different video conferencing with your colleagues <clears throat> and it can be a great time to brainstorm interdisciplinary topics that they could then the children can do at home. So, for example, you could create synergy and <clears throat> lessen the time that the students need to sit in front of a computer by working on projects um, based on this wealth of information that they have in their home. And um, they could, for example, create a time capsule. Uh, perhaps they could create a time capsule of the coronavirus. They are in a, uh, this is an historical moment and they're living it. So maybe they could gather newspaper headlines. They could create a collage of newspaper headlines. <clears throat> they could interview different people, uh, video conferencing with them to see how different people are managing. They could calculate, do mathematical calculations of the different curves of spreading of this infection in different countries, for example, or different counties um, near where you live. They could investigate different cultural reactions. Um, I had my university students do this. It was fascinating to just see how, what was the difference in uh, the underlying culture and how it supported or did not support what different governments were trying to do. Um, they could draw pictures. They could take photos documenting it. They could write a song. And these, this could be an interdisciplinary project where it's not so important that they sit in front of the computer, but they are still learning. Then 
They could also become e-pals. Remember when we had our pen pals? They could have e-pals in other parts of the world. We are all going through the same thing at the same time. It's incredible. I mean, when will this ever happen again? And so um, maybe they could also uh, brainstorm things like uh, how to make e-learning even more interesting. How could they study the Spanish flu epidemic and then study the geographical and historical and economic and cultural um, uh, effects of the Spanish flu? Um, they could think you could put them in group in small groups where they brainstorm different ways to think of how they can help the local population. How do you help all elderly people uh, get what they need? Could they also become buddies with elderly people in the population or people who are immu immunocompromised who have to spend maybe a longer time in their homes? This can all be coordinated through collaboration with native language speakers, uh, native language teachers, foreign language teachers, physical education teachers can get involved. Um, you could do this with art, music, history, geography, math, science. It's all, all connected. Then we can give them choices. When I talked about the container and within the container, giving them possibilities of um, making their own choices. Should we do this particular project? You can choose to do it in pairs or individually. Do you want to draw a picture of it or do you want to do a collage? Uh, would you uh, like to write a, like a creative short story or would you like to create an Instagram account for this historical figure? Um, and then maybe we could just ask them simply to generate as many questions as possible instead of just always asking them to provide us with answers. Because when they are the ones um, thinking up the questions, they are the ones that want to find the answers because they, it's cool. I had the question and then I found the answer. And remember that their curiosity ignites yours. It's a virtuous cycle. And everything that uh, you, that helps you think outside of the box <clears throat> and add that little bit of spice is going to give you energy. This is an amazing opportunity. Even though it's stressful, it's tiring, it's also, um, let's say, scary sometimes. Just like Marta was saying last week, it is a little scary. But think about the incredible opportunities and how much you will emerge enriched as an educator and as a human. And you have the ability to sustain that in young people in a totally new way. And we've met enough of you teachers to know that you uh, work magic. So thank you again for uh for being here with us and um <clears throat> tune in next week april 22nd right here 2 p.m when my uh, colleague marta mandolini will be back for another uh teacher talk just like this we'll have more details to follow on what marta is going to talk about i send you all lots of love here from florence and i really cannot wait to see you all again mm -hmm. thank you so much for following us and have a wonderful day bye bye everyone